Hello ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to this update video where I'm proud to say um, I'm back. My new PC build is done, finished, and is up and running. I'm recording this video right now on it as a, a test to see how it handles video recording. I've got the old PC that I was having issues with fixed and repurposed now as my um, dedicated streaming rig, so that's going to be the PC I use when I'm doing my live streams on Twitch and here on YouTube. Um, I've got my Elgato connected to that so it can receive footage from the gaming PC, the new one, and also my PS4. Um, and I just want to take a few minutes now to talk about my experience of building this machine. There is going to be some footage um, later on in the video that I took during the building process. I didn't record as much of it as I wanted to, um, purely and simply because um, my health situation um, basically prevented me from doing so. I had no idea until I started this project just how much of an effect my health issues, my disabilities following my accident have on me to do even the most simplest of things and you know building a PC something I've done several times in the past that would normally only take me a couple of hours took me you know pretty much nearly a full week I was literally sat at my dining room table for nearly an entire week building this machine because I just physically could not do it I physically could not keep going long enough to get it done I'd have to do it in little stages and then go take a rest come back to it do a bit more I would have issues obviously with my breathing which then affects a lot of other things and one of the biggest things I ran into as I was building it was just purely not being able to concentrate my brain would get really really f like foggy and you know I knew what I had to do I just couldn't coordinate myself to do it and it was so frustrating I, you know I had to get family members to help me you know which I'm, I'm grateful for their 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 support during the process you know it can't come to been easy for them me having a PC and loads of bits on the dining room table for a week forcing them obviously when they wanted to eat meals and stuff to have to go elsewhere you know taking over that whole room <laughs> but when I needed their help to come and help me do some bits and pieces in the build they you know were accommodating and they did help me because I, like I say I was struggling with things and it's been a big eye opener this past week not just in the PC building side of things but also in me personally you know with my my issues and disabilities it's been a real eye opener that you know I'm not I am so far from where I should be health wise it's it's scary um, but anyway the new PC is built and um, could have been more um, more more straightforward I think I did run into some issues during the build anyone who followed me on like the Twitter Instagram and stuff might have noticed and been aware of some of the issues I encountered during the build um, I put it purely down just to bad luck, bad luck with the the combinations of components that I chose to put in this this build. All of the components on their own were absolutely fantastic, highest quality, you know, top of their you know respective areas. But as a as a combined effort in this build, some of the stuff didn't work out quite how I I, I wanted it to. Um, the Cooler Master case that I built in, the H500P Mesh White, fantastic case. I'm looking at it now on my side, and you'll see the, the PC in the videos later on anyway. It looks, it really does look fantastic. I have got, I did go and get a, um, I bought an additional tempered glass panel, so I've got tempered panels on both sides of the case. I got rid of the, the plain white one off the back because I like the mesh panel and um, the tempered panels. The fact that they're quick release anyway is so much better. Um. Hello everybody, welcome to today where I'm going to start building my new PC. And this is the case I'm going to be building it, building it in. The Master Case 
sorry, the Cooler Master Master Case H500P Mesh White. And it looks like a fantastic case. Two 200mm fans in the front. Uh, we have room in the top for a 380mm radiator. And then obviously we're going to get to the actual unboxing. Now to do this, we needed a very big knife. Got to have a big knife when you're opening boxes. Most definitely. And basically proceeded to cut the box open. Obviously get the case out. It's a fairly big case. You know, it's a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. I will admit that. Obviously because it's got a tempered glass panel, it's a lot heavier than any case I've had in the past. It's a lot sturdier and especially as I bought an additional uh, tempered panel to put on the rear side of the case because the, you know, the panels are interchangeable. So I've actually got tempered panels on both sides of this case. Um, it's a very solid and sturdy PC, <laughs> most definitely. And getting it out of the box was not easy. And have got a little box of bits. Inside this little box is all the um, was the uh, motherboard mounting screws, a whole bag of those. Um, then there's some additional fan screws for if you wanted to put in additional fans because you can change the 200mm um, fans in the front, the two 200mm fans. You can change those. They, they give you an additional plate if you wanted to fit, fit another, you know, like a 140mm uh, fan. Uh, a couple of 140mm fans in the front of the case. They gave you the, um, the additional brackets for those. Um, and then obviously you, you also had all the like the little um, the court um, the cooler master RGB lighting nodes and boxes and stuff like that to connect all the fans the fan controller boxes that's all in that little um, box of bits. When I got the case out, it comes in a lovely, lovely cooler master bag. That is a great big massive shopping bag. That is a bag for life. <laughs> I'm going to take that to do me grocery when I go to Astor at the weekend. I'm going to start using that as my shopping bag. And then obviously inside that we had the case, which was nicely polystyrene, and then um, also a nice plastic bag as well to keep it nice and clean. Very well impressed with the packaging. And as I say, the case when it come out, it definitely looks the business. And as you can see just briefly there, there is a filter on the bottom for the power supply unit, a removable filter. So this thing has got, you know, it's been designed very, very well. And then obviously the components that I put in that case, I, I had started having issues. <laughs> First one, the Asus um, ROG Maximus Hero 10 motherboard. Um, you know, ATX motherboard, so this case more than adequately supports up to like, you know, E-ATX um, motherboards, but um, had some issues. Um, first of all, mounting the motherboard in the case, I ran into a problem. Because I, the, how I envisioned having my Corsair all-in-one water cooler for my CPU, obviously I wanted a push-pull configuration of the um, radiator. And it's a 280mm radiator, the H115. Um, so obviously I've got the, the, the stock fans um, in the top of the case. I then had the, the, the radiator. And then I had the two um, additional ML140 RGB um, fans that I bought um, mounted on the bottom. So th because they have the faster um, speed, they were pushing the air through the radiator and then the two obviously stock standard um, non-RGB fans that come with the cooler I was having as like the, the pull configuration. Mounted perfectly fine in the top of the case because it, you know the, the case supports a three, up to a 360mm rad in the top um, but because of the, the thickness of the fans the radiator and then the second set of fans it just hung down too low in the case that I couldn't actually get the motherboard in. So I ended up losing the two stock fans and just having a, a push um, set up because obviously I like the, the RGB lighting shining down from the um, top of the case, which I've got just set to white. Um, on the, the All the case fans are white. And then I've got the, uh, the, the RAM on my motherboard, um, white and green alternating. So the four dims, white, green, white, green. Um, the motherboard itself has white, 
lighting on it, LED lighting. My graphics card, obviously NVIDIA GTX 1070. That's green, the lighting on that's set to green. And my water, the actual water cooler, the Corsair water cooler, I have that set in the Corsair Link software to indicate temperature. So it goes green, and then if it start, the temperature starts to increase, it goes to yellow as a bit of a, uh, just to signify that it's getting a bit warm. And then obviously if it hits 80 degrees or higher, it goes red <laughs> as an alert, you know, this thing's getting hot. Um, which thankfully I don't see a lot of. <laughs> but yeah, I had issues, as I say, I had to lose two fans to get the motherboard in. And that's when I noticed another issue then. Some of the, the connectors on the motherboard, like the SATA ports, didn't line up terribly well where cutouts and grommets in the um, the case were and that then led to an issue because the the Asus motherboard they supplied you with um, four SATA cables all of which had a right angle connector on one end and I instantly found that I couldn't use the right angle connector on the motherboard side of the um, deal because the SATA ports didn't line up with the, the cutouts and grommets in the case and then because of the way the case where the case positions the hard drive trays and the hard drive cage I couldn't use the right angle connectors on the hard drive side of things without having problems so the first two places to obviously put hard drives the two SSD um, trays on top of the the power supply shroud again you have like the shroud which sort of goes in at an angle and then thumb screws down and the that you, you fasten the SSDs underneath the trays so when you look into the case you just basically see white you see the, the power supply shroud and you see these two little white trays but you can't see the the, the SSDs because they're underneath but the problem with that is because the SSDs are then mounted upside down the right angle connectors stick up and then you'd have cables everywhere and you'd have to bend the SATA cables back quite sharply to feed down through the um, the little again cutouts in the the motherboard tray and the case um, and I didn't like the idea of that I didn't want to risk bending the um, SATA cables I didn't want to risk breaking my SSDs so couldn't do that if I put the the trays on the in the the additional mounting points on the back of the actual motherboard tray you couldn't get the right angle connectors in because they would clash with the they the, the basically hit the tray and they'd bend try and bend out they'd try and bend outwards to, to connect which again you don't want to be bending SATA ports on your um, hard drives as I then discovered when I tried to mount my brand new Seagate mechanical drive which I was going to be using in this gaming rig for you know data um, games that don't need terribly fast um, hard drive access for loading and obviously recording all my video stuff onto. Um, there's a hard drive cage in the front of the case just behind the, the bottom of 200mm fan and it has two little quick release trays. I put the obviously the three and a half inch mechanical drive in the bottom one, SSD in the top, put the um, cables on, power cable, SATA cable, push the um, trays back into to lock them in place and what I then found was because of obviously how long a three and a half inch mechanical drive is it pushed right the way back and there's actually like a little step on the back of the cage on the case and again where I'd got the the right angle SATA connector on the hard drive it met that step and basically tried to push against the step and ended up bending the connector which then broke the SATA port um, off the um, hard drive basically broke the plastic you know the, that surrounds obviously you got your pin your SATA pins which make your connections in your cable but then there's like a plastic connector that goes around those pins which obviously your SATA cables latch onto and you know securely fasten to that broke and also because that plastic got stuck then in the SATA cable that SATA cable can't be used anymore because the connectors stuck in the connector so um, the two and a half, two terabyte drive has ended up going into my old PC my streaming rig now because I've got a five inch hot swap caddy on the front of that and the three and a half inch drive man, because of the way that the, the bay is slides in 
it can't be the drive can't move around so it does slot and line up perfectly with the connectors obviously inside the the caddy so the fact that there's no connector on the the sort of pins doesn't matter because it slots in and it isn't going to go anywhere but if you try to mount that hard drive in a normal drive bay or some there's no way to keep the SATA cable connected it doesn't it doesn't connect to the pins and it just falls off so I was very disappointed with that aspect of the build I was very disappointed as well with the motherboard only having two USB 2 headers on the board because so many things today want to connect USB headers when you've got water coolers RGB lighting um, you know power supplies that want to monitor temperatures and voltages and stuff like that I, I was in a situation where I had four devices in my i would got the um, Corsair what the pump the H115 pump wants a um, header um, USB header the the power supply the Corsair power supply wants a USB header for the Corsair link um, the ML140 fans want a um, USB header so again they can connect into the um, Corsair link software and you can control the lighting the the cooler master RGB um, case fans they also wanted a header and then the the case itself obviously the front um, the front IO panel wants a USB 2 header as well as a USB 3 header so I had five devices one in two ports on the motherboard so I ended up having to go and buy an, uh, an additional like splitter box and NZ NZXT actually do a great little box which plugs into the USB header um, it has to have a Molex connector going to it to provide additional power but then it has four slots on it for um, devices that you need you know a USB header and it's also got two um, normal USB 2 ports on it as well so that went in which obviously allowed me to get everything configured and everything uh, you know at least working but it's a bit of annoyance that again you have to buy another device which then wants um, additional power has additional cables and takes up additional room especially when you're trying to keep everything tidy and cable managed um, which again was one of the issues I had with the case from the front of the case looking in the case it's, it's all very neat and tidy no, no doubt about that it's certainly the nice neatest build in that sense that I've ever done the rear of the case again with its its shrouds its cable shrouds and its you know areas it's very good at hiding cables however obviously it, it was a bit difficult getting everything really neat and tidy because again I ran into some issues again the Corsair water pump the fans um, both the Cooler Master fans and the Corsair additional fans they all want SATA cable they all have SATA power requirements so they all have these great big chunky blooming adapters hanging off cables that need a, a SATA cable from the power supply you know to, to give them power and then you you know you look at a you know a SATA power cable they're not exactly the, um, the smallest of things to try and on the back back of a you know back of a motherboard tray between your you know your rear case panel and the motherboard tray you don't have a lot of room and you've got these big chunky connectors that you've got to try and squeeze in or squeeze behind shrouds I mean I did it I managed it but it wasn't fun it wasn't easy and you know it got to the, I mean I, I, I did buy additional cables you know because I thought you know I'm gonna need to change the cables that come you know I've gone for these are you know braided individually braided cables which are a bit more flexible and bendable but didn't use them in the end because it just got to the point where I just wanted to get the PC built I was you know after several days of, st of struggling I just wanted to get it built get it up and running which um, I managed to do and amazingly when I got it in place and got it connected up and I pressed that power switch for the first time it posted and booted which is a first normally I, I mess up something 
and nothing happens and then I have the whole <gasps> what have I forgot to do moments but on this occasion everything worked first time and um, I went through the BIOS set obviously set up all my BIOS settings got the CPU clocked at 4.8 gigahertz at um, 1.3 volts got the obviously the XMP on the RAM so the RAM's running at its full 3600 megahertz um, got the fans set up so the fans are actually running at full RPM all the time but if you listen it's amazingly quiet this is the quietest PC I've ever had Despite the fact it's got two 200mm fans in the front, a 140mm fan in the rear, and two in the top, they are quiet, and they're running at full pelt. They're quiet. The, te the fan technology has really moved on a lot in you know recent years. And like I say, it keeps my PC running very cool. This gaming rig, you know, right now, even though I'm recording this video, it's at um, 30 degrees. <laughs> CPUs at 30 degrees and unless I'm running something like the Intel Extreme tuning benchmarking tool or stress test um, program it doesn't get up you know temperature wise I mean the stress test tool does push the temperatures I start hitting like 80 degrees you know up to 85 I think is the max I've seen the PC go to in the time I've had it which then obviously causes the, the Corsair pump to glow red. It lights up red as a, woohoo, you're getting a bit hot. But yeah, that's at full 100% utilization for well over an hour before it gets to those temperatures. Yesterday I did a test, I did a video, I recorded a video, I did some Skyrim videos for my Let's Play series, rendered them on this, on this new rig, and unbelievably, when I went to Task Manager, despite the fact that Vegas is obviously rendering the videos, the CPU was only being used 67%. Now on my old PC, it was at, you know, 97, 98, it's, you know, as soon as I start rendering a video on my old PC, that's it, that video, that PC becomes useless. You can't do anything else on the PC while it's rendering. But this was 67, you know, percent CPU utilization, rendering. And what's amazing is I rendered a 50 minute video in about 26 minutes, which is just, unreal I've never seen it a video render so fast you know that's gonna make my production time a lot better um, the only other issue I had with the build then was when I came and actually to installing Windows 10 on it um, I ran into the problem where once I'd installed the software it came to activate it I got the message that the um, license had already been used which I was very disappointed about because I bought the, a brand new copy of Windows 10 Pro from Amazon and obviously some naughty individual had put, purchased it, used it, returned it and then they, Amazon, were even more naughty because then they resold that to me. So I've had to send that back with a, a bit of an angry letter of complaint and uh, promptly requested a refund which I then went to Microsoft and actually bought the um, Windows 10 license directly from them to guarantee um, a, a working license. Uh, okay, yes, I paid a bit more for the license then buying it direct from Microsoft, but at least everything's working. Um, so yeah, I'm now back to doing um, gaming, video recording, um, hopefully streaming. I've just got a, still got a few things to set up how I'm going to do that because obviously I have the the old PC is the stream rig now. The new PC is the game rig, but I'm still in a situation where I have one monitor to view two PCs on, or try and view two PCs on. And also, I need to figure out a way in which I can easily have access to the old PC in terms of mouse and keyboard. I do obviously have the thing that I've got the Razer Naga Molten Edition plugged into the, the game rig, um, the streaming rig. I've now got my slightly newer Naga, my 2012 Naga which was on my laptop, that's now on the gaming rig because obviously it's green and it goes nicely with my um, uh, Chroma, Black Widow Chroma keyboard um, the Nostromo still looks bad because you know, it's blue 
I can't pick it up because the cable's quite tight because of where it plugs into on the the um... yeah it's plugged into the gaming rig but obviously I've got the gaming rig turned around so the front of the the case faces me whereas the stream rig faces away from me so I've got the back of the case looking at me so obviously to plug stuff into the back of the gaming rig the cables have to travel a lot further away from me so I don't have a lot of play on the Nostromo I really would like to get an orb weaver at some point because it's mechanical and it has more buttons and it's obviously I can make it the same lighting then as the the keyboard and mouse but obviously on the stream rig I've got my old um, Logitech K750 wireless um, keyboard plugged in at the minute I did try experimenting with the um, Synergy software there's a, a, a program called Synergy which costs like $39 to buy which allows you to use one mouse and keyboard to control multiple PCs or that's what's supposed to happen in theory using your obviously your network connections but unfortunately I discovered a slight issue with that being when you switch to the other PC it takes quite a few seconds of moving the mouse around and touching the keyboard trying actually get it to recognize you've switched PCs and also if you if the PCs not PCs aren't already logged into Windows and that software is running it doesn't work so for example I restarted my streaming rig got to the the login screen and can't enter you can't enter your password because obviously the software is not running so it doesn't tr um, transfer the the key presses across so yeah not brilliant I've got to have the obviously I'm, so I've, I'm kind of forced at the minute to use the the Logitech I did look at KVM switches but they're all terrible because they're all they all want like VGA or DVI connectors to your monitor and you know we're in HDMI and DisplayPort territory nowadays um, so that was no good I have experience of KVM switches from you know companies I've worked for in the past where we've had them when you know I've had multiple PCs at my desk and I've been able to switch through the different PCs to do different things while only having the one monitor the one keyboard and mouse you know the hardware switches are fantastic but they haven't really progressed with technology to be useful because as I say, I'm, I no one uses. I'm, I don't know anyone using VGA or DVI these days. It's all HDMI and DisplayPort. Um, and again, I need that because I need the audio. I need HDMI audio transfer because obviously I'm connecting to a TV, not a monitor. I don't have desktop speakers in my setup, um, so everything comes through my normal TV speakers. So that was the only issue I'd got really figuring that out so yeah gonna be fun setting up figuring out how to get the streaming working as I say the footage and everything not a problem because the gaming rig uh, is straight into the Elgato which goes into the stream rig which then goes into OBS or whatever I'm using to stream Streamlabs OBS so that's not a problem but it's just figuring out how to get the controls because again I don't have a lot of room in my setup for to have two keyboards and two mice and everything that comes with that so that's stuff I've got to figure out over the next few weeks <laughs> I might just try for the moment just seeing if I can stream and play comfortably from the gaming rig that might be one thing because again if the utilization of the CPU is going to be so minimal because it's obviously six core 12 threads I might be able to get away playing games at you know real high quality you know on on full out maxed out ultra settings and still be able to stream at a reasonably high rate <laughs> so yeah right I'm gonna go now because I'm aware that I've been rambling and waffling for again for 20 odd minutes and you probably want to actually see some of the footage of me doing the build and see what the PC looks like now it's all finished so I'm gonna go away now I'm gonna say thank you for watching as always, please remember to leave your likes and comments in the section below. And please leave likes and comments, it is very important. Um, subscribe, obviously, if you're not already subscribed. That way you get to stay informed when I do post content. So you can keep coming back and keep supporting me. And um, don't forget to share my videos with your friends and family. And again, help get me out into the world and get me, you know, established and 
give me some notoriety. So for now, it's goodbye. <laughs>